solved. A Russian defector enters the CIA and claims that a Russian agent is going to try to kill the president. Evelyn Salt, being a specialist on Russian affairs, is asked to conduct the interrogation and he claims that she is in fact that Russian agent. She insists to her superiors that she isn't, but the lie detector suggests that he is in fact telling the truth. So what exactly is going on? I think one of the first things to note about this film is that the conspiracy nuts are going to love it. I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but they do make for pretty fun fiction sometimes, so I enjoy that aspect. Another thing, another thing about this movie is that it is very intense. From start to finish, there's almost always something happening, and I was never bored, although it did feel like the last 10 or 15 minutes really didn't need to be there or needed to pass a lot faster. With that said, only about half the action is actually effective and very little of it is like unique or really unforgettable. If you want to watch an action movie that's really going to hype you up and you're really going to feel it for a long time after you leave the cinema, this is not it. It's pretty entertaining while it's going on, but you calm down fairly fast once it's over. This is written by Kurt Wimmer, most famous for Equilibrium with its gun kata. I haven't watched it yet, but I expect to do so within the next couple of days. And he's also somewhat known for Ultraviolet, which also contains gun kata. And while I personally think it's a pretty decent film, it was clearly chopped up very nastily by the producers, taking away a lot of the emotion of the film. What's left though is a lot of very visually creative action scenes. There are things in Ultraviolet that I haven't seen anywhere else. And yes, you do stop caring about what happens in the film before it's entirely over, and that does include the action because, like I said, the emotion is almost entirely gone. But if you want to watch some really great creative action, or you just really like Mila Jovovich, for me it's both, I would definitely say check it out. And some people are going to say that it's just constant CGI. Yeah, some of it is. So, not only are the effects very good, but they're also very creative. I'm sorry, but you have to distinguish the films that are just constant CGI, just trying to overpower you, and the ones that really show you something that you have not seen before. It has a lot of originality. Anyway, those two films, if you know anything about them, should probably tell you that what he writes well, as far as action goes, is stylized action. And this one goes for a much more realistic approach. I think it would have been good to have someone else maybe help out with the action sequences because there's a very clear conflict between the stylized action in the script and the realistic approach when it came to filming. It just does not look that good most of the time. Another thing Wimmer writes really well is twists. I did not see the ending coming. Others will, no doubt. The real problem is there are so many twists and turns that you wind up just with absolutely no ground to stand on, nothing to cling to. For most of this film, you don't really have a character that you can just say, that is the person I'm rooting for, that is the person I hope will win. Yes, you spend most of the movie wondering if Jolie's character, Evelyn Salt, is a good guy or a bad guy. And you know what? Anti-heroes can work really well. Characters that you're not entirely sure if their motives are entirely sincere can work. But don't make them the lead. The anti-hero, sure, but not the person that you're not sure what their goal is or who they're doing it for. It doesn't work like that. It, at least not in a mainstream popcorn action flick. 
Our lead in such a film does not need to be smart. Watch Commando. I know I've been bringing that movie up a lot in these current movie reviews, but it is just a very good example of a pretty dumb, loud action flake that worked. No, Arnie's character, John Matrix, isn't a rocket scientist, and he isn't a nice guy, but you know his motivation. You know it from five, ten minutes into the film, and it doesn't change. And so we can cheer for him, and still are, 25 years later. Our throats are quite sore, but whatever, because there's no two ways about it. He wants his daughter back. That's easy to relate to. You know, heck, mentally erase the part about it being his daughter. He wants someone he loves back. Other people took that person, and he wants to bring those people a world of hurt. That's simple, and it works. In this, you just do not know. I will say that Joe Lee and, to some extent, Schreiber give really good acting performances. And I don't think it's that Schreiber is, like, bad, but Jolie gets to do more. There were at least two sequences where Jolie really had me into it. They did kind of lose all meaning once I watched the rest of the film, but at the time, they really worked. She really goes for it. And she kicks a lot of ass. Which brings us back to the action. The martial arts in this movie are way too slow. I guess they just figured we can't beat the Bourne trilogy, so we're not even going to try, but you can't really do that. If you do, you have to go for something else. It looks like Bourne on Valium. Every single one of them is quite slow compared to that trilogy. The music is quite fitting and at times really gets your adrenaline pumping. The editing and cinematography are pretty good. They're there's some handheld, but it's used well. It's not Paul Greengrass really irritating, headache-inducing. Another thing about the action is that I would say there's way too much chasing in this, especially vehicular chasing. It just seems to go on forever. And you kind of stop caring about a couple of these sequences before they reach their climax. Dialogue is pretty varied. I'd say most of the attempts at being clever come up short. There's some pretty cool guns in this. Part of the problem here is also that the concept is outdated. The Cold War is over. I don't think all that many people are going to be really excited right after coming out of this movie. Honestly, if you just really badly want to watch a current spy action film, I'd really say go for Night and Day. It's actually more entertaining and and offers more substance. And it too has that sort of thing where you're not entirely sure if the lead is the hero or the villain. Anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of Salt. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see